done. Done, done, done. 20 times is done. 20 times is done. <laughs> hey everyone, long time no see. I am back with great news because 20 time 2018 is done. Put a fork in it, it is done. So if you remember my last YouTube video, I talked about 20 time, a, a spring semester project that I do every year. And this year I decided to make a full year curriculum. And so I kind of went dark on YouTube. I was around on the blog, but I haven't made any videos for a while because I've been in the wormhole of creation uh, for the last 12 weeks as I've been building this huge project. I'll put a link down there where you can hear more about the process and the project and 20 time and grab free stuff and all that good stuff. But basically, I'm done. Like, I finished it. And not only did I finish it, I finished it with an entire week ahead of schedule. So if you remember, I told you guys that April 6th was my do or die deadline. Well, I don't need April, y'all. It is March and I am marching on out of 20 time this time around because I was just super productive. So I want to share with you, like I always do, a share out of what I did and what I learned along the way because those are the two things that 20 time focuses on. It's not necessarily just about completing a goal, but it's also learning during the process. Okay, so what I did. So I created a 180 day full curriculum in one download that new teachers, uh, teachers taking on a new prep, homeschool parents could use to teach English 9 and English 10. So if you know the Common Core State Standards, you know that those are lumped together. So English ELA 910 is just lumped together. So I built an entire year curriculum, every slide, every handout, every lecture, every bell ringer, everything that a teacher would need to meet those standards to teach that class. And it's now available. Yeah. So I've been working super hard to make that happen. Um, it's, uh, I'll, I'll do a little, why don't I just show you what it looks like. I'll just do a little tiny bit so you can see what the thing looks like. All right, this is what teachers are gonna see when they download the full year curriculum. Basically, it's a bunch of folders that I have stuffed full of all the pieces and parts that a teacher would need to run the full year class. So up here, I've got my Open Me First folder where there's a page of directions and just a note from me explaining how everything's organized. I've got Cal calendars, which are month at a glance. So let me zip up to the beginning. So a teacher could see how, you know, have a bird's eye view of how everything is going to run so they can prep and plan ahead. Um, those same calendars are in an Excel spreadsheet. It's not as pretty, but it is editable so people can slide things around. And then every single lesson overview with the uh, Common Core State Standard tags are in this Word doc. They're also chopped up and put into the daily um, folders as PDFs. There is an extras folder where I have included lots of things, including all of the bell ringers and complete sets. I've got the five minute essay grading system, which I've talked about in previous videos. It has just saved my life. So I've, I wrote up an ebook um, and then I've got all the grading forms, which have all the rubrics in both PDF and editable versions in there for folks that are super useful. I would encourage uh, teachers to read that ebook maybe a week or two before school starts so they have a strategy about how to deal with all those papers before they start showing up. Um, even have some fun stuff. There's lit supplements, uh, you know, activities that you could use with any story that you're using, novels, plays, short stories. Um, the vocab one is one I use all the time. Oops, that's the key of it. Uh, this is what, it, well, let's see, there it is. That's what it looks like. Uh, lots of different things for kids to do with a word they choose. And then I do have a key uh, for folks to use, um, you know, to show kids what your expectations are as they go. I've even got uh, parts of speech posters. I threw that set in here too, in case you have a new classroom with bare walls. Um, you can print up some really cute stuff. You know what? All right, I'm going to open it. Um, I love these because they're just modern and fun and bright. And let me zip it down so you can see that. So you can definitely... Um, now just have some fun. Put color, mix, match, print them up at a local copy shop. Um, our local library media center does them for, I want to say it's like 20 cents a page. It's really inexpensive um, and they look really slick. So anyway, so I got lots of good stuff in the extras, but really those are just extras. The heart of the system is here in each of these daily folders. So every single day for 180 days, uh, I have all of the slides, all of the handouts, and an overview sheet, like a lesson plan for the teacher to use to see how things are gonna run. And those are 
everything that you'll need. So each day has one of these overview and CCS pages. And it's just a note from me to the teacher saying kind of what we're doing, why we're doing it. Um, if there's a YouTube video that I've made that explains it in more detail, then I've linked it there or a blog post. You know, I've been blogging for years and years and I have lots of things that I, I guess I feel like I curated all of that material into one place in like little bite-sized chunks. So I envision a teacher like on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, opening up the week's, you know, folders um, and reading over what's to come and then they can just make their copies and they're good to go. So some days are like that. Um, so some days I've got lots of explanation, like especially early in the year as we're getting things started. Uh, day three, I've got, you know, a little like graphic here to show you how I would do something. But then some days, especially as we get going, are, are just pretty straightforward. There's not a lot on the overview. It's just here's a note for me. Here's what I think, you know, here's how I would do it. But the cool part is that no matter what's happening, I have always dug out the common core state standards that we're targeting with that day's materials. Everything we do in every day's folder has a hook into the CCSS. And I thought that that would be really valuable, especially for folks who are navigating that coding system for the first time. So this just goes on and on <laughs> and on. And as you can see, there's this folder after folder after folder of stuff. I've got everything you need. On the semester, day 90 would be the end of the fall semester. I have two options for the final exam. One is just a Scantron type option. The other is more um, applying skills and short answer. And then we just keep going for what feels like probably like forever, right? It's just, more files, more files, and it just, yeah, everything you need in every little bit and piece. Um, all the way down to down here, the last week, this is the last week of school, hey, last week of school, uh, all the way down to 180. All right, so that's enough of that. If you're interested, you can learn more. There'll be a link at the bottom, but as you can see, I've been busy. Okay, so 20 time is, it's, it's about the thing you build for sure, but it's also about what you learn along the way. Cause sometimes people do 20 time projects and they don't end up accomplishing their goals. I have learned about myself that I'm super goal oriented. So if I decide to do something and I announce it publicly here on YouTube or the blog, or even to my family and friends, I'm going to get it done. Like, I just know that that's in my DNA. So you might not have that. And that's cool because even if you fall short, you're better off than where you started from 12 weeks prior. So what I learned this time around was some reinforcement of some things that I already knew and a little bit of new stuff. So I learned first up that fear is a big fat liar. <laughs> like fear lies to us and tricks us and scares us into not doing the big, hairy, audacious projects or goals or things that we want to achieve. And this was definitely one of those fear factors for me. I had been thinking about doing this project for over a year and it, it, it it was only because I had made it a 20 time project that it actually happened because I was told, I was telling myself that it's too big of a project. Um, you don't have the time for that. Who do you think you are to put that together? Someone else has already done that. You know, I had like all of these like fear whispers in my ear that were just lies. Like I could do it. And once I actually set all those doubts aside and just like did the work, I did the work, like it gets done. Um, the second thing I learned from the process is that um, it's, it's the Nike slogan, right? Just do it. So there's this thing called, what's it called? Decision fatigue, right? In like tech circles. So like decision fatigue is that you get so worn out figuring out all the little things that you have to do today that you don't have the mental space or energy to do the big things. And that's real for me. And I hadn't really thought about it this way. So Steve Jobs very famously, avoided decision fatigue by just regimenting things like he would have the exact same breakfast every day and he would wear the same uh style of blue jeans and a black you know mock turtleneck you've probably seen those pictures of him but just like doing the same things so that you don't have to think about those little things so for me i didn't have to decide to work on 20 time I had already made that decision when I announced it publicly to you guys at the end of January. And so for me, I just set a schedule. And what I ended up doing to find the time to make this happen was every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning, I woke up at 3 a.m. 
and I just got to work and I worked as hard and as long as I could until my family got up and kind of interrupted me and all that. So it, it wasn't hard because I had already decided that that's what I was going to do. So when the alarm went off, I didn't lay there and go, should I work on it or should I sleep? No, I just, it, it was work time. So removing the deciding out of it actually made me much more productive because I felt like there wasn't any wasted energy in like talking myself into doing it, like going to the gym, right? Like, should I go to the gym? I'll feel better. But uh, so if, if I just make the decision, then uh, once and then I don't have to make the decision again. So that was a, a really nice takeaway for me. And I have been going to the gym also now because I'm one of those annoying morning people. Like 3 a.m. probably sounds like craziness to you. But actually, I have insomnia and I'm often up that time anyway. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just a morning person. Don't talk to me at 9 o'clock at night. I'm completely useless. But 4 o'clock in the morning, that's prime time, prime Laura time for you. Um, okay. And then the other big takeaway or thing I learned or reminded myself of is that time passes anyway. So if time's gonna pass, you might as well accomplish the big things that you hope to accomplish. And so I had a really tangible representation of that this spring as George, you remember my new family member, has grown as my project has grown and he's all fleshed out. I tried to actually tape this with him yesterday and it was a huge disaster because he's licking the phone and he's knocking stuff over and he's barking out the window and you know, he's a puppy. So, but here's a little photo representation of where George was at the end of January when I started and where he is now at the end of March. Yeah, I should have called him Moose instead of George because he is huge. Uh, but he is a really concrete reminder for me that time passes. Puppies grow up, kids get through the school year, you know, uh, we all get a little bit older and don't I want to make big things happen? And you know I do. So I did. So that was a good reminder for me. Um, things that helped along the way. So I, when I was tired um, or getting to like a really hard part of the project, there was a lot of writing that went along with this project because I wrote out the daily lesson plans for 180 days. And there was definitely like, a, oh my gosh, this is the, the doldrums. Um, one of the things that helped me get through that was remembering the purpose of my project. And this project had a lot more meaning for me than earlier projects. So like last year's project of pulling, of doing the chin up, that was all personal. You know what I mean? My why was just about me proving something to myself. But this year, the why was about you and all of our teacher colleagues, especially the new ones coming up. And I remember what it was like to be drowning in prep. And I just thought, you know what? I can do this. I can make this thing that's going to help that person manage his or her class and is going to help those kids have great materials to work with. And that was a huge driver. So the why was especially motivating this time around. So I think if you can figure that out for the stuff you want to do is why does it matter? Why is it important to you? And then satisfy that. Um, another thing that was helpful was getting support. Uh, I just joined Facebook like in the last year. I mean, I've kind of been on it, but I don't really use it a lot. And I've just kind of been figuring it out. And I'm in like groups now, which I'm like figuring that out. But a couple of people, I'd say there were like four, maybe five times where people had messengered, messengered me, instant message. I don't know what the little thing pops up on the screen. And they told me a story about, you know, they're working on their 20 time goal and they were thinking about me or they're excited about the curriculum and can't wait to see what I come up with. Or they're about to hire a new teacher and the department chair wants to give my curriculum to that person. And I'm like, ah, like th th these little like atta girls, which we just don't get those a lot in the classroom, right? When was the last time your principal came in and said, I think you're awesome. Just keep being awesome. You got this. Um, it goes a long way. And so if you were one of those four or five people on Facebook, thank you. You're awesome. You helped me kind of push through during the hard times. Something else that helped was knowing the path of 20 times. So um, I've used this uh, graphic before because it's just true. Time and time again, it's turned out that there's a recognizable pattern to the workflow of 20 time. And if I know the big dip is coming, the, the big frustration, the bottom out, I know it's coming, I can brace for it and prepare for it. And so this year I totally was. Like when I hit it in, I'd say probably week three, 
so mid-February, I was like, I know what this is. If I just keep my head down and keep looking at one foot in front of the other, I'll get through it and I'll get into the upswing of productivity. And sure enough, I did. So late February, early mid-March, I was killing it. I was just like working. I was in the flow. I was really productive. And then it was done. Like all of a sudden I was like, oh, all the pieces are there. Let's go talk about it to my friends on the YouTube. So um, knowing what's ahead of you, having a map um, is great. And so that really helped. And then finally, um, family and friends in real life. So my family, <laughs> they they know that I blog, obviously, and they know I have a TPT, and they know I do this stuff, but they don't really know, like, what it is. Like, I asked my husband if he wants to be on videos. He's like, not my world. No, thank you. <laughs> and I'll kick around ideas with my own kids. I have a 15-year-old, and I have a 25-year-old. How you like that? Um, and I'll, I'll kick around ideas with them, but they don't really get, like, super involved. But this project, for the first time, all three of them were involved. They, they helped me out with like organization and looking at like how to set things up. And I just, if I got tired, my husband in a, in a beautiful way was just like, you can do this and I know you can get it and, and tell me about it. And he actually listened and I mean, he listens to me, but you know, you know how husbands who aren't teachers are, they like, they just don't get it. He got it. I think for one of the, the first times in a big project that I did. And that was like, that was huge. So it was a real team randazzo affair, so that definitely helped. Um, so there you go, 20 time 2018, what I did, what I learned, it was really great. I hope that you are either bringing 20 time to your students or even just trying it out for yourself or just thinking about it because it really is revolutionary in terms of making your spring semester count in a way that's meaningful to you, not some other, you know, Department of Education deciding what it is you need to spend your time on, but what do you want to do? So um, there's materials down there if you'd like to grab a set of 20 times stuff that I use. Um, there's also a link to my new full year download. Hey, give it a look. Uh, there's calendars. Uh, the calendars are free. Um, it is a paid product. Obviously, it's 180 days of curriculum. I mean, it's 17, did I say that? 1,700 slides. I counted them up and I was like, holy moly. Uh, and hundreds and hundreds 800 some odd uh, pages so there's a lot that goes on with it so you know you got to pay for that but the calendars are totally free so there'll be a link down there for those two if you just want to see how I lay out my school year um, and how I would do it if I was teaching your English 9 or your English 10 class on your campus um, one question I'm sure I'll get uh, either here or on the blog YouTube or blog um, is that's great for English 9 10 when are you gonna have English 11 12 or when are you gonna have English 8 and the answer is I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, whoa, 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 whoa. 120 time thing at a time. I would, I would say maybe American Lit is my next focus just because I have a lot of stuff for juniors already and I could, I could fill in some holes that I have over there. But honestly, you guys, I can't even, I can't even think about that right now. I just want to bask in the glory of English 910 and just like, pause for just a minute and enjoy this. So uh, thank you for watching. If you're still there with me on YouTube, I really appreciate it. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell a friend, let people know what we're doing over here in YouTube land. All right, you guys, I'll see you soon with something else. I'm sure I'll cook up. Okay. Bye everyone.